I got a crush, a girl in the morning class. Whenever she would smile, would be more than worth the while. I hope she'd be impressed to see me in my Sunday's best. I think it's the latest trend. finished dancing Zumba. You know, here in the Philippines, it's the teachers of the public schools who are fond of dancing Zumba. Your Lola prefers Tai Chi. What's that again? Tai Chi. Oh, Tai Chi. Lola, did you learn that from our forebears? No, I just downloaded that from YouTube. You know your Lola Te. I'm sometimes techy. I also update myself with the use of new new media technology. Lola Te, you should record your stories and upload them online. They'd be a big hit. No, it's the two of you who should do that because you know more about the new media technology. Well, Lola, a few days ago, you just told us about the terno and the barong. What about the rest of the costumes? Oh, you mean the woven skirts and beadworks? Yeah, that sounds exciting, Lola. Yes, it would be more fascinating knowing the costumes with our genealogy. Well then, let's begin the fun. Okay, so you listen. My grandmother who was the daughter of her mother, was born as a granddaughter of my great-grandmother in my name, who happened to be the daughter of my great-grandmother under my foot, whose mother was my great-great-great-grandmother in the road. Lolote, hold on. We can't understand. Slow down. Meaning, we call our grandma in many names. Lola sa tuhod, lola sa talampakan, lola sa ugat, depending on the generation of the grandmothers. What's that again, Lola Te? So there's lola sa tuhod, lola sa talampakan, and then lola sa ugat? Yes, Trixie, very good! Lola sa ugat, my grandmother, the root of all mothers, was born in Iloilo. Lola sa ugat was tender, caring Ilonga, malambingit. Her name was Lola Teresa. One day, Lola Teresa, with her best friend, decided to make tanan. What's tanan, Lola Te? Um, tanan is to run away secretly. Run from what? Usually with the intention of getting married. Married? I thought the man was just her best friend. Yes, they were. And their parents knew about it. Their parents knew that they were getting married? Uh, of course not. It was a secret thing. 
a secret that they were best friends? No, their parents knew that they have no special relationship. So, why elope? Bakit po nagdanan? Because Lola Teresa wanted to join the Filipino Revolutionary Forces against the Spanish conquerors. Wow, so great. Wait, who's great? Her boyfriend? I'm talking more about Lola Teresa. The man wasn't her boyfriend. Nah, but how sure are you? Well... Maybe he was just trying to help Lola Teresa escape. Right, Lola Te? Later, her best friend became her boyfriend in the movement. Unfortunately, her boyfriend died when they were attacking the Spanish garrison. How sad naman. So nobody knew about it. That they were attacking the Spanish garrison. Well, I mean that nobody knew it was her intention to join the revolutionary movement. I suppose the news just kind of spread around. Later, later the whole community learned about it. They learned that they fell in love with each other. Mm, that Lola Teresa was the one leading the Filipino revolutionary forces. Right, Lola Te? Yes, later. Lola Teresa met a sugar farmer from Negros, who later became her husband. Their daughter, who was my grandmother under my foot or Lola sa talampakan, married a Batanggenyo. Alae, they swam all the bodies of water from Visayas to Luzon to live in Batangas. Their eldest daughter, my grandmother in my knee or Lola sa tuhod. Married an Ilocano, a farmer from Vigan. They decided to settle in Pampanga and they had 11 children. All of them were twins. <laughs> Their youngest, Dabunso, who is my grandmother, married a merchant from Bicol and they live happily ever after. Wait. Where are you in the picture? What picture? I haven't shown you any family picture at all. Ah, you meant who was the product of my grandparents? It was my dad, si Tatay. You know, my face is a copy paste of my Tatay's face. Tatay kept all the woven skirts from north to south collected by my merchant grandfather. Hi, Ella. Thank you so much for your time for doing this. Really appreciate it. Yes, thank you also for inviting us and you're welcome. Um, I am Ella and I am with uh, Clint. We will be showing you our traditional attire here in the Northern Philippines, specifically from the Tadjan Mountain province. Okay, so would you like us to start? All right. Yes, sure. Anyway. That would be great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so I would like to show you how the women's attire would look like. I will start from the accessories. We have the head beads. This is made up of uh, snake bones. And then we have the ivory. And we have the beads. And then next is from the clothing. We have the, this is what we call the blazer or the lama. Okay, this is the topper for the women. Uh, we don't have uh, upper clothes before, so we were topless. <laughs> and then next to that is we have the wraparound skirt or the tapis. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Mm -hmm. This is customized, so this is a little bit smaller than what I'll be wearing in a little while. Then, of course, we have the bakgut. Or this is the belt. Okay, I'll open it for you to see the design. This is the Kinuli Bang Bang design. And the tapis that I've shown you a while back is the Kinte. So next to that, I'll show you how to wear these clothes that we have here. So for women, I'll wear this uh, Kinte for you. Usually, we wear this right over left. So that's how you're going to wear it. Make sure the one on top is longer than the one inside if you can see okay 
And then here's another design of Bakdat. This is the Inispada. If you can see, the design is purely Seisan. Okay? So wearing your Kinulibangbang Bakdat, you have to fold it in two. Make sure nothing touches the ground. Get two threads and then you can just wrap it around your waist. Make sure the opening is facing up because it has purpose. This is the hardest part in wearing your tapis because you have to make sure that the eco or the tail of your back gut will be in the middle at the back. Remember a while ago, I told you to wear your back gut facing the opening of the fold upwards because this serves as a pocket for women before. You can just put your money here, tobacco, hairpins, or anything that uh, you would want to keep. So this is how it looks like. And then, of course, to complete the set of attire, here. This is our lama, or the blazer. Wear it, and then you can add your accessory on top. All right, so there you go. Hi, everyone. Good morning. And thank you so much for having me. All right. So uh, I will be showing you how to wear the one is or the G-string in English. Uh, in the olden days, they do not have any underwear. And they just use it without any well, coverings over here. For you to wear this, you have to sli uh, slide it under here. Hold on. I'm going to remove this so you can see it. So it's like that. So from your light right hand, you're going to tuck it over here like that. You have to make sure that the right side is uh, the one showing. This is the wrong side and this is the right side. And then mm -hmm. you're going to wrap it around here, pull it right over here. You have to make sure that it uh, goes at the center. And finally, you can just uh, slide it over here. And finally, it's done. All right. So uh, in wearing the ones, you have to make sure that the one in front is shorter than the one at the back. And to complete the attire, we have to wear our chaleco. And finally, the bud bud. This is actually uh, that wide, but we have to fold it in two like that. And we also have to make sure that the opening is, is at the top. And you just tie it around your head like that. And finally, our attire is complete. That's so nice. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, that's how the men's clothing is worn. And also, I have uh, some collections here. Uh, this is the clothing for the Balangao tribe. This is the head beads for the Balangao tribe from the eastern part of Mountain Province. We are on the western. Culture is dynamic. We can change it as long as we do not uh, bastardize the value or the uh, beliefs that is that are embedded in it. All right. Wow. Okay. All right. So, um, actually, this design, then, uh, our... Uh, yeah, the, the lady with the titakara is wearing a kalinga accented attire. Uh, titakara is wearing the mountain province attire, yes, and she wore it. Mm -hmm. Wow, very good. <laughs> you look beautiful in that uh, titakara. Of course. So, yeah. Anyway, the, the beads worn uh, either as a necklace or a, as a head bead is uh, a symbol of status long ago. Wow, it the, the bakgat fit uh, Titakora well and yeah. uh, every time you dance it would uh, sway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And I think I saw some uh, woven materials on the background. Yeah, this one. Yes, it's, yeah. this one is more Kalinga. Mm, yes, that is also one of the original um, attires of Tajan. That is also the Kintug. Uh -huh. If we could go closer. All right. So um, this is one of the most original designs, the earliest designs of weaving or backstrap weaving. This, this part, that, that part is what you call the alludos. So those are symbols yeah. of our forefathers, which is... Uh, connected to, to nature, uh, this symbolizes that, that th those fine on the close, closest to the white ones are the rice fields. Okay? The nice. flowery designs are the butterfly. All right. Oh, we oh. have also tapis or the loin, I, I mean the G-string, the yeah, loin cloth. Okay. Um, the G-strings, yeah. Have a look. 
the zigzag design uh, symbolizes the mountainous area of our region. Oh, see? The meaning. Yes, and of course, the, the one in the middle are the rivers. Yeah, the, the yellow one. one in that mm -hmm. combination. If you're going to look at our attires, they are really close to nature and uh, they are mostly interpreted to uh, uh, give symbols. Um, I would just uh, like to uh, say just it's okay to uh, incorporate those as long as it is not the original traditional attire like the one we are wearing right now and of course the ones we are wearing in the fora. We just hope that these are not the things that we should be cutting to to just mm -hmm. attach it somewhere else no. because we, no. we value our attire. We wear this with the pride mm. and with prayers. This is more than formal for us. So if, if somebody would like incorporate the traditional weaves into modern clothes, they could just buy or get some other designs or colors which are not very close to what we are wearing as a traditional attire. Yes. So so those are welcome. So congratulations, Sir Harvick, as always, for doing a great job in designing our modern clothes with an accent of our tradition. So those are welcome, as always. Yes, and I know, I believe uh, Sir Harvick have, uh, have researched more than uh, enough before he did uh, accented these uh, clothes or modern clothes with our traditional attires. So this is a mural. We, we can have different ways on how to uh, show that we are proud of our culture and uh, our traditions. So this is for us to educate the youth. That's why we place it here. So I hope it would inspire somebody else also to do this on their wall. When you decide to show you, this is the female uh, uh, attire for the women and of course the males. And on the other side, we would like to show you some of our best sites in Tanzania. We have the waterfalls, our sleeping beauty or the mountain. And of course, we have the dancing uh, images here. All right. Um, this is the Pinan Yuan for you youth uh, handkerchief in dancing. It's a kerchief dancing. And this one is the Tayao. All right. That's his work, of course. We have the rice terraces, the mountains. Okay. So we just would like to inspire people with this output. You know, our, our culture is so rich. I'm still learning at my old age so much that I have not learned before and have not appreciated. So I also want to thank the, uh, the MIT team from, uh, from all of you there across the seas, including my very good uh, friend Ella and her team. Thank you for doing this because this is such an educational uh, tool for not just, not just the seniors like me, but I think the young people who will see this and I hope there will be many, many young uh, young people, not just Filipinos, but Filipinos and their friends who will learn about the Philippines from this production. So thank you for all your efforts. And we hope this will not be the last. <laughs> so thank you and yeah. we wish you all the luck. We hope that uh, COVID stays away from all of you and that you be healthy for all the times to come. Okay, let's keep each other in our prayers. Thank you.
people are waiting usually in the mornings for the magtatahod to come. I don't want to rush out. So I've got the uh, mugs ready here. Yeah, so let's just wait for the magtatahod. One there is the silken tofu. This one is the silken tofu, and there's syrup. Hi again. Um, so here we have the taho, it's, um, silken tofu, as you can see here, or as you have seen earlier. When the magtataho was uh, preparing the taho, this is the second tofu. We also have here the sago or the pearls here. And then there's also the syrup or the arnibal. The syrup that they put in there. It's a bit diluted now. So the taho is usually enjoyed. Um, with a spoon or you can also eat it with a straw or like sip it through a straw um, but me I actually I don't like using spoons so I just drink off of the cup <laughs> um, yeah so you can enjoy it however you want to enjoy it um, so this is the taho let's eat let's try good <clears throat> I forgot to mix it you have to mix it before you you dive in mm. it's really good thank you magtataho love it cheers hi everyone so we're here at Tusbanos Laguna and we're about to get our fresh baked buko pie let's go So we just got our fresh book pie and let's go home and let's eat.
sa iyong uh, Pilipit and uh, binili ni Jay sa may Asian store sa may Aurora. I remember growing up um, having to snack on this Pilipit. Sampu kaming magkakapatid, you know. So when I buy one of these, uh, I usually find a good hiding place sa bahay so I can snack on this all day long. Let's try it. This one you're not hiding because you're sharing. <laughs> okay. okay, so let's try it. You can only have one and I'll have it. <laughs> mm. It's like, do it's like dry donuts. <laughs> mm hmm. I kind of thought. <laughs> maybe, yeah, like three bucks, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> this is good with uh, um, hot like tea, me. hot tea, and maybe some vanilla ice cream. Yeah. yeah. They're in for some taho. Taho? Okay. It's made out of soybeans. Okay. Is it a drink? Do you drink it? No, I'll give you a few words for it. Do you like it? Where's the green hand? Can I try that green one? You want to try this red one? Yes. So what can you say? Cheers, Cheers, Papa. Okay, what is that, Riker? The lip it. About yeah. to smack down on some crackers. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Do you don't like this? It's yeah. a pretzel, but it's covered in like sugar yeah. cookies. Yeah. Jasper, this Wait, is for you. Try this one. This one you're gonna say this is all at all. Yeah, I thought you forgot salad. This is all at all. Yes. Okay, but you get a shirt to pop You don't like the bowl These are good. I don't like the design. I don't know if I'm trying. Wait for the I tried that one, that one. That's actually really good. I haven't tried this one yet. And I tried that one. Wait for the If I don't like it, I'm sorry. You that's okay. If you don't like it, that's okay. Yeah. As soon as the aftertaste kicks in, it's pretty good. Hello everyone, I'm back, your friendly storyteller Louise. Hi. Hi. So, so today I'm going to tell you about the story of the turtle and the monkey. Here they are. Well, in all countries of ASEAN region, there exist different versions of this story. What I'm going to share is our own version, the Philippine version. But before we continue, I would like to ask you a question. Do you know who is considered the first comic writer in the Philippines? Only a few know that Jose Rizal was the first Filipino to create comics. He first wrote the story about the turtle and the monkey. Now, like what we did in our first storytelling seg segment, all of you must join me in the storytelling. Will that be okay? Oh, yes. Great. Now, we are going to divide you into two groups. On my left would be the group of the monkeys. On my left. Who is the group of the monkeys? Wave your hand. Okay. Nice. Now, on my right would be the group of the turtles. Wave your hand. Okay, great. Now, to the monkey group. Can you show me the movement of monkeys? Okay, good. Now, how about the turtle group? Can you show me the movement of the turtles? can do this uh, like okay now now whenever i raise the picture of the monkey and the turtle you will show the movements okay okay uh let's try uh the monkey it's just hey the turtle okay good now let's start the storytelling. Once there was a turtle. 
Okay? And a monkey. Okay. As they were taking a walk along the riverbank, they saw a banana plant. The banana plant was being carried away by the current of the river. Seeing it, the two friends went to retrieve it and carried it back to the river bank. The monkey whispered to the turtle. The monkey. <laughs> Look, friend, we better divide it and go plant our halves to see if they will grow. If they did, then we'll have something to eat. <laughs> Now, the two friends cut the banana plant in the middle. Since the monkey was stronger, he chose the upper half thinking that this would grow better because it had leaves. Because the turtle was weaker, the monkey gave him the trunk. Now, they carried their share to their houses. Upon arriving in their houses, they immediately planted their hats. Now, the two friends met together after some days have passed. When the turtle saw the monkey, he said, Hello, friend. Good morning. How are you? How is the half of that which we divided that you planted? Now, the monkey replied to the turtle, I'm just well. My half of that which we divided died a long time ago. How about yours, friend? <laughs> now the turtle whispered to the monkey. My half of which divided has borne fruit. And there are many ripe ones on top of the tree. But I'm just not able to pick them. Hearing that, there were many ripe fruit on top. The monkey replied, <laughs> My friend turtle, for I'll take care of picking them for you. <laughs> now the turtle say, Thank you for you are merciful. We can divide the fruit between the two of us. Then the turtle invited the monkey to his house. He took him to his backyard. When they came near the plant, the monkey was indeed in a hurry in his eagerness to see the ripe fruits between the leaves. The turtle asked the monkey to climb it. When the monkey reached the top of the banana, he immediately ate and ate the bananas as many as he can. The poor turtle begged the monkey to stop but the monkey would not listen because he was too busy eating the turtle got angry with the monkey he went to get many thorns from the riverbank he planted many thorns around the banana trunk after planting the thorns he went to hide under the coconut husk now the monkey went down after he had finished eating, he could hardly move down because of the bananas he has eaten and the numerous thorns the turtle has placed underneath. In short, the monkey suffered large wounds upon going down. He looked for the turtle and found him under the coconut hut. When he saw the turtle, the monkey said, No! You're really going to pay for what you did to me, as I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> Choose whether I'll pound you or throw you in the riverbank. Now, the turtle answered to the monkey. I prefer being pounded to being thrown in the river for I'll drown. <laughs> Aha, it's good that you said that. So he dragged and brought the turtle to the river. <sharp inhale> On arriving at the river bank, the monkey drew the turtle into the river. Now the turtle swam and laughed at the monkey and said, this has been my home since childhood. The monkey went to the house of the 
elephant. The elephant greeted the monkey. Good day to you. Why are you here? The monkey replied. I came here to your house to ask you to remove the water in the river where I threw the turtle who fooled me. Now, the two went to the river. When they arrived there, the elephant drank the water slowly. The river was about to be emptied when the monkey and the elephant were surprised because they couldn't find the turtle. Now, the turtle went running to his friend Crab and begged him to help. The turtle asked the crab to prick the belly of the elephant so that the water which he drank would pour out. The crab agreed to what the turtle requested. Meanwhile, at the river bank, the elephant reached the middle. The crab quickly went to the elephant and pricked his belly. The water poured out of the belly of the elephant. The monkey and the elephant both drowned. <gasps> the turtle was very happy and gave thanks to his friend, the crab. Now, that's the end of our story. Now, what can you say about our story? It's nice? It had interesting elements. Yes. Yes, it's nice. It's great. Yeah, thank you. Now, what have you learned from it, from the story? Don't be mean. Don't be mean? Yeah, that's right. Would you be the team monkey elephant or the team turtle crab? The team turtle crab. Okay, thank you for listening and participating. See you again on our next storytelling session. Bye! Ako si Ramon Kahipe, taal na tagapayte, sinilang at lumaki dito sa bayan ng Masining. Ako si Ramon Kahipe bilang isang mag at isang skultor ng bayan ng Paite. Bata pa lang ako, mahilig na talaga ako sa art. Na alam ko na talaga siya na yun yung, yun yung passion ko. That time, uh, siguro mga sam na taong gulang ako noon. Doon ako nagsimulang umawa ng pangukay. At nagsimula rin ako mahilig sa mga, mga simpleng ukit na kagaya ng mga lumang ano namin, lumang art namin dito sa Paiten na ginagawa. Handle ng bag, which is mga yari siya sa kahoy. Tapos yung mga simpleng bagay lang yun, susumbrahan mo lang siya. Yun, yung mga lumang items namin dito na gumagana dito sa Paiteno na, na pinagsimulan ko bilang isang patang mag-uukay. Lumawig na nang lumawig yung hilig ko. Gusto ko na matutong mag-uukay ng buka ng tao. Gusto ko mag matutong mag-uukay ng buka ng manok, aboy, kalabaw. Hanggang sa, ayun, natutunan ko na siya dahan-dahan. Kasi sa dami ng, ano, sa dami ng mga, mga nagpapa-uukay noon dito sa Paiteno hanggang sa nahasa na ng nahasa na ng nahasa hanggang sa nag-decide na ako mamasukan sa isang company tapos hanggang sa hanggang sa nagkaroon ako ng idea na gusto ko na rin ano gusto ko na rin maging makilala bilang isang skulto na makikita mo nag-exhibit sa mga galleries so yun, yun nagsimula yung pangarap ko pagkain ng mga masyarok sa mega mall yung mga galleries na malalaki Doon na, na nagsimula yun, that was mga 1999. Itong papagod na ako sa kakatrabaho sa ibang lugar, gusto ko talaga dito na lang sa bayan namin, sa Pipe. Decide na ako 2016. Nasimulan yung mga gusto kong gawin. Hanggang sa nagbukit na ako mga bahay-bahay na maliliit. Magawa ko ng mga obra uh, para sa sarili ko. At nakakatawa naman, bonus din na nabibenta siya. Nabibili sa amin yung mga nakakagusto kolekta na rin kahit pa paano. So, ayun. Hanggang ngayon, tuloy-tuloy na yun. Tapos yan. Puro 
traditional wood carving yung ginagawa ko mo sa pipe deck. Sa proseso, pwede nga ano eh, kahit maraming, maraming, maraming approach, pwede mo simulan sa sa dulo, pwede dun sa una, kahit saan. Actually, pwede rin dun sa gitna. Kung halimbawa mo design ka ng isang obra, pwede along the way, wala ka pang idea. Basta ang alam mo lang halimbawa ay mabukit ka ng kumuha ng babae. Bukit ka lang kumuha ng babae. And then, later on, isipin mo na yung idea kung ano yung makakaganda dun sa obra mo. Ilagay mo na lang sa. Pero ang mas maganda is yung mag... Meron kang iguguhit mo na siya. Iguhit mo siya sa papel at tanuhin mong mabuti kung ano pa yung mga idadagdag mo designs para yung execution ng ano mo, ng obra mo, hanay na. So yun yung pinakang the best na approach para sa amin. Naka, naka-plano na siya, naka-drawing na siya, naka-draw siya kung mga iba sa harap at sa gilid at sa kasalikot para at least alam mo na lahat yung elemento na ilalagay mo. So, yung proseso kasi ng pag-uukit ng kahoy ay pabawas. So parang parang ang parang ang filosofiya ng pag-uukit ng kahoy is kung mag-uukit ka ng kalabaw, kailangang bawasin yung hindi mukhang kalabaw at ititira mo yung mukhang kalabaw. Basically, ganun yung ano yung filosofiya ng pag-uukit. Uh, may mga oras na magkakamali ka at lalo na kung mag-uhan. Pero may mga paraan naman para may tama mo yung magkakamali mo sa pag-uukit. Pero mas maganda yung kung gagawa ka ng isang obra na simula sa isang bloke ng kahoy ay Inukit mo siya, yun yung lalabas agad. So, dahan-dahan. Pabawas kasi siya. So, mas maganda kung may plano para dahan-dahan mo siya maulit. Nang eksakto dun sa iniisip at inaplano. Para alam mo kung alin yung babawasin at hindi. Yung panahon namin na mga bata pa kami, sa tingin ko mas madali noon na gano'ng magpasa ng kaalaman. Kasi more on na noon eh, hands on yung mga matatanda eh. Sabi nga nila yung old school, mas maganda kasi talagang maiintindihan mo siya as in eksakto yun na mismo yung tinitignan nung no, no, no art, nung sining. Halimbawa, mag-uukit ako ng puon, ng mga santo. Merong mga particular dito na mga matatanda na eh, ituturo nila sa yung basic simula sa pagbubukas ng muka, pagbabagbag ng ano na ako ay simula sa simula hanggang sa may uwis mo yung buwan sa ato. So, noong panahon namin na pwede ka pang mag-usap na, ano, na magkaharap, wala talagang abala, walang distraction kasi kayo lang dalawa, wala kayong gadgets noong time na. Although, hindi ko naman sinasabi na mas, ma, mas, mas, mas madali yung sharing ngayon kasi video. Pero iba pa rin yung old school na kaharap mo yung nagtuturo sa'yo na hands on at nakikita mo mismo yung proseso. Doon, walang shortcut. Ultimo yung, ultimo yung smallest detail na ituturo sa'yo, makikita mo lahat. Walang sikreto. Yun yung ano, uh, advantage nung ano, advantage nung panahon namin na talagang hands-on yung pagtuturo. Yung munisipyo namin is may ginagawa mga, may mga ginagawa mga ano, program dyan sa mga ganyang bagay. Matanggap sila ng mga bisita, depende sa dami ng estudyante. O so, yun, nagbibigay kami ng mga uh, demo para sa mga pagkataan. At the same time, meron din kami mga, yung art community namin kagaya ng ngayon, uh, kagaya ng mga online, kagaya ng pagkakakilala natin. May isang kaibigan na nag-message sa akin last night, tapos sinabi niya, o pinadating na ganito ang mga tao sa iyo na gusto nilang makita yung ano, kung sa'yo sa mga pag-uukit. Then sabi ko, oh sige, willing naman ako mag-share ng ano, na knowledge niya at saka yung ano natin. Actually, maganda yan para sa ating lahat kasi yung kultura natin, may bahagi din natin sa iba para malaman din nila yung ano natin, yung ways natin, no, yung old school na pamamaraan sa pag-uukit. Pag-interesado ka, nandun na yung urge mo, nandun yung pagnanais mo na gusto ko matuto. Madali na siya, ano, madali na siya ang punin yung inspirasyon. Kasi pagka yung ang mga basic dyan is, kailangan mo paggawa ng sarili mo. Kami, mga basic tools lang, yung bawa mga itong piraso, yung si piraso, ganda. 
then meron kang isang piraso ng malambot na kawin na pwede mo okay din. Yun, yun na yung simula nun. Mas marami na ngayon kasi meron na tayong YouTube channel na pwede mo tingnan, panoorin. Nanood ka ng mga 30 minutes para pakiramdam mo sa sarili. Experto na uli ako. Experto na ako. At tsaka isa pa naman, kahit na yung nandito ka na sa edad ko na ganito, ganun pa rin, nag-aaral ka pa rin. Walang hanggan yun, walang hanggan yung yung sining, walang hanggang ano, pag-aaral. Kailangan may mga bagong bago yung gumadating. Kailangan matutunan mo sa tsaka yung bukal. Kailangan bukal sa loob mo. Pag bukal sa loob mo, mas madali. Mas madaling tanggapin at tsaka mas madali matutunan kasi madali mo siya makukuha eh. Kung baga willing ka at tsaka ano, interesado ka, mas madali siya pag -aaral. ko sa, ano, sa mga gustong matuto at yung sumusuporta sa sini mas maganda kung yung sariling atin ay tatang, tatanghilikin natin at patuloy natin ano, patuloy natin buhay para maipasa natin sa mga susunod pang henerasyon para magpatuloy yung sini hindi lang, hindi lang dito sa bayan na fight eh. kung sa lahat ng sini sa, sa buong Pilipinas sa buong mundo ganun ang gawin natin para magpatuloy siya, para hindi siya, hindi siya mamatay, hindi siya uminto. In 1904, the U.S. hosted a World Expo in St. Louis, Missouri. More than 60 countries had participated in exhibits, and 19.7 million people attended. Governor General William Howard Taft wanted to showcase the newest distant colony and brought more than 70,000 exhibit pieces and hundreds of indigenous people for the Philippine Exposition in 1904, St. Louis World Fair. Ninety-nine out of one hundred. This is the estimated percentage of expo guests who visited the Philippine Reservation. It was the most popular attraction of the fair. The section occupied 47 acres of the fairground, containing reconstructions of buildings like the Manila Cathedral and the Ayuntamiento. Apart from buildings, the expo also featured native boats such as pintas, bancas, prows, and many other fishing vessels that occupied Laguna de Bay. 700 Philippine scouts made parade rounds on the section grounds every day. Many buildings were dedicated to featuring the natural resources of the Philippines. Namely, the Commerce Building, the Forestry Building, Agricultural Building, Mining Building, and the Fisheries Building. The Ethnological Museum showed off clothing, pottery, and other handicrafts. But the highlight of the expo is, or should I say, are the tribal villages. People were fascinated over the primitive displays. In the Negrito village, Negritos displayed their prowess in archery. The Igorot village was a crowd-getter for the curious visitors eager to see a dog boiled for dinner. In the Moro village, visitors were enchanted with performances in colorful malongs worn by the wives of Datus. The Visayan village displayed wood carvings, textile made from juicy piña and embroideries. Christian ladies wore ternos and entertained the visitors. The sibling duo Juan and Martina de la Cruz were another popular attraction. Juan reaching 29 inches high at 29 years old, and Martina was 39, reaching 27. They were called the smallest fully developed people in the world. Needless to say, like most things, the Philippine Expo had its fans and its critics. A few Filipinos and Americans were displeased with the decision of sending non-Christian natives, fearing that it will monger the perspective that Filipinos are dog-eating, war-hungry savages. Zoologist and Secretary of the Interior, Dean Worcester, advocated for the Expo, believing that Filipino Christians are ashamed of their non-Christian fellows. He emphasized that one-eighth of the Philippine population is composed of non-Christian tribes, and these people are as real as Tagalogs. In light of events of recent history, however, the Expo paints a different picture. Filipinos and Americans went to war against each other for independence of the archipelago in 1899, the war officially ending in 1902. However, 
Two years later, American troops are still in the midst of fighting insurgents in the Philippines. The expo was believed to be both a victory celebration as well as a justification of the colonialization and subsequent crackdown of insurgency, the wonders of modern civilization, a display of the supremacy of the continent over its primitive neighbors, colonialization for the sake of social progress. Many Filipinos of the expo did not survive the winter. Unused to the climate, they caught pneumonia and eventually perished. Some tribes, such as the Igorots, ended up staying in America to work as exhibits in another village. They returned to the Philippines five years later, as Dean Worcester outlaws exportation of tribal groups for exhibition. As for Juan and Martina, there were reports that they were signed up for the circus, but nothing more than that. As for the 70,000 exhibition pieces, many are stored in the Smithsonian. There were attempts to bring them back to the Philippines, but they were never followed through. Okay, hello, good morning to ev uh, good afternoon to everyone. Hello. Hi, I am hello. AG. Hello. Yes. I am AG and I will be, you know, your coach for today. And I am a member of Artist Inc. And I've I've coached the last uh, the last time the last game that I had. So you'll be the one I'll be coaching today. So again I am AG and I want uh, I want to know you guys. So can you introduce yourself to me? My name is Pastor Arnold from TFC, the Philippine Church here in Colorado. Hello. Hello. Good morning. My name is Krizel. All right. Hi, Krizel. <laughs> Hi, Casey. Hi, Casey. Hi, I'm Casey. Hello. Hello. I'm and I am Francis Aragon of the Philippine Church of Petro, Denver, Colorado. Yay. Oh, my gosh. The energy is so high. Okay, so yep. before I give the instruction, I will be first watching the video, uh, just a simple instruction video for everyone on how yeah. to play the, the game Tumbang Preso and then... Okay, so we've watched already the video and... Alright! So, Tumbang Preso or it is called Tumbang Lata, Tumba Lata in Tagalog. No, it, it means uh, knock down the prisoner or the can. The game's primary objective is to knock down the guarded prisoner or the can with the slippers over it. The players use a certain tool to hit the prisoner. So, in the game, the equipments we need are, you know, slippers or the pamato, and then a can or any cylindrical object that you have there. The can is called the, the base, and the pamato or the slippers, uh, it is used to knock down the can or the prisoner. One of the players serves as the guard, 
or the bantay of the base. You know, the guard or the bantay. And the rest are the hitters. So mechanics of the game. As you've seen in the video, we have the toe line. And then on the other side, we have the base or the circle drawn on the other side. Uh, how to choose the first guard or who will be the taya. So the players have to throw their pamato. From the base, from there, you're going to throw your pamato over the toe line. And then the, the farthest pamato that landed on the toe line will be the first guard. So the farthest pamato from the toe line will be the first guard. So your goal is your pamato should land on the toe line or near the toe line. Okay, so the guard rolls is he places the can inside and then put his or her pamato over it while the heaters stand ready behind the toe line and then the heaters will be throwing their pamato uh, to the can and then they have to you know knock it down so that's the main objective of the game and then when your pamato hits the base or the prisoner the guard will have to put it back first before tagging the hitters okay so you need to be fast if you're yeah the, you need to be first, fast to like, yeah if you're the you guard you need to be it. fast and then the, the hitters or the players will have to retrieve their pamato and then run until they reach the toe line. So the guard is not allowed to catch you when you're behind the toe line already. So if the hitter fails to retrieve his or her pamato, when you're going to retrieve your pamato, that's the time that the guard is allowed to catch you or to tag you. But if you did not touch your pamato, the guard is not allowed to touch you. Uh, when you touch your pamato, you have to run. You have to be able to get caught. Okay? When, your pa when you throw your pamato and then it landed near the base, the guard can, you know, step on, the, on your pamato. And on the base, the pamato that is near the base will be the guard. So change roles again. Okay. Uh, okay, okay, got it. Yes. Okay. So did you get the game? Yes. So are you ready to play the game? Hi guys! Hi! 
So I wouldn't ask you if you enjoyed the game because I think you really enjoyed the game. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, and you're still catching your breath. So any, you know, any reactions of the game? Like, do you have do you have any you know insights or do you want to say anything about the game? It's harder than I <laughs> thought it would be. Childhood memories. <laughs> oh yeah. We should play this more often. Yeah, you should play that more because it's you know it's a bit of an exercise for everyone. Yeah, even adults can play it too. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much for, you know, thank having you. fun. Thank you, Yeah, and did understand what the instructions that I gave. So, congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Be careful, Lola. The internet connection in my house is very poor. I need to stay on higher places just to have a signal. It's pretty clear here, but please be safe. Okay. Yes, please. But we're not yet done. You never mentioned the names of all of the great grandmas, except for Lola Teresa, your great Great, great grandmother, the root of all mothers. Ah, yes, the root was named Teresa. Then our grandmother under my foot was Teresa the second. And our great grandmother in the knee was Teresa the third. Wait, wait, wait. Let me guess. Lola Tay, your grandma was Teresa the fourth. Ah, no. Because her father misspelled her name. She was Teresa with a letter H. You mean Teresa, letter T-H-E-R-E-S-A. No, not like that. The letter H was placed at the end of the name. So it was Teresa. You know what? Whenever she is called by her mother, the whole community would hear, Teresa! So, Lola, you are now the fourth Teresa? Just Teresa. No more code number. Because when I was born, all the Teresas 
was already six feet under the ground, resting in peace. Or in Filipino, patay. Some will say, tegi bam bam. Tegi bam bam? Yes, the Filipino gay lingo. Tegi bam bam. Wait, so how come you lola te? Is it short for Teresa? <laughs> Maybe when you were a child, you had a stomach like a tadpole. But it did. Ah, you are la. You are teasing your lola. No, in our class, I was the most beautiful, and they would call me beauty. Later, it was just te. After classes, even though I played with my bare feet under the heat of the sun, I never had warms in my tummy. I remember I had long hair and I had plenty of... Plenty of... Plenty of friends? Plenty of uban. White hair. I can vividly remember me and my playmates. We would fall in line in the stairs. There is one in front of me and there is one at the back. While I was braiding the hair of my friend in front of me, the person at the back, my friend, would use two coins to pluck my white hair one by one. <laughs> but you know, I always make it a point to sit at the gold. Wait, you had gold stairs? Apo. Old folks believe that their steps represents oro, plata, mata, meaning gold, silver, or death. Stair steps are erected with a ritual of Counting to three, uh, using the chant of oro, plata, mata, for each count. So no gold. Well, do you still practice that custom? You have a second floor in your house. No more. Your Lola Te has an elevator. Elevator? You're rich, Lola Te. You know what, Trixie? They would use pulley to pull me up and down. That was I. That is the reason why I was able to go up here at the top of the roof. Mga apos, this is my favorite spot of the house. It's as if I'm in the balcony. Whenever I'm here, I would remember the sweet moments when your Lola Bulding was courting me. I kilig to the bone. Wait, Lola Te, what's kilig? Ah, uh, kilig, it is something that you feel extraordinary feeling when your lover is in front of you. How romantic. Yeah, we also miss Lola Podin. And I also miss Cario. Wait, Lola Te, who's Cario? Ah. Uh, Cario, Cario is the best friend of your Lolo Polding, my husband. You haven't told us about him before. Ah, nako, forget about Cario. I will tell you about Cario some other time. Okay, well, that's just how romantic love goes. I mean, what a fruitful day. We learned a lot about that day. We did. We learned what love is, how to love a person, and how to love your pet.